constant game of checkers where they go ahead and dig one area, then backfill in later on. I think they said they have enough land to be able to dig this up for many, many, about the next uh, 60 to 70 years. There is no charge to go, but you have to be with an accredited group, such as the dry dredgers. And you have to sign up for it. They have thousands and thousands of people who sign up for slots. Only a few are able to get in each year. We've been very fortunate to be there uh, several times in the last few years. So it's a rather unusual place to go to. Seven of us started out on this trip to get there, and I really apologize to the dredgers for this, but we did see some minerals along the way. We did see a coal seam, so we had to get a couple of coal samples because we're not used to that. We're used to all the dead stuff that we find. So a couple of us brought back lumps of coal for Christmas stockings. Uh, now, we, some of, we, you get there different ways in North Carolina. You can travel inside. You can see it's a nice, uh, comfortable port explorer, complete with all the radio communications inside. Um, others use different means of transportation. <laughs> I hear that sleep spy in that, too. But regardless of how you get there, eventually, seven of us actually made it. Um, you'll notice a few wearing hard hats. Everybody has to wear hard hats inside the mine. We'll see that in a minute. There's our destination. Doesn't look like much. That's the parking lot. At now, for those who were there last year that unfortunately we couldn't get in because the mine was rained out, we were finding meg teeth, small meg teeth, in the parking lot. They actually take this material and pave with it, which is horrifying to us. Uh, fortunately, we had great weather this year. These are a few of the people that helped put on the program. You see the one woman with all the stickers from the trips in the White House? Those are the people who are the guides. They're the experts who take us through. Um, it takes a lot to organize. You see all these people standing around. You see the different white hats for a few of these trips. And you see lots of people signing up the release forms and everything else. You have to be 18 years old, have steel-toed shoes, no sleeveless shirts. You have to have a hard hat and goggles if you're going to be chiseling anything. If you're chiseling anything here, you're doing something completely wrong because this is a sandy mixed body. You don't have to hammer anything out. And then you get on the bus and go in. You see the gentleman there on the right? We'll go back to him in just a moment. Board the bus, and then they take us over to the site. We had a little bit of good luck for this year. They, the ramp keeps washing out where we were going to go into. And they said they hadn't quite finished the ramp, so we went into another area that no one had been to for a year and a half. Wow. Yeah, all that erosion <laughs> going on, no footprints or anything. They were salivating to the thought of it, too. If you take a look, there's people wandering around into this, what looks like a barren lunar scape. And again, you can see a lot of the water in the area. We're climbing around on those hillsides all day. Um, some areas are being reclaimed, as you can see, where, they, where there's some green areas in, and eventually they will backfill this as well. It's like, and you can see people, there's a few people up in the front, you can see, um, walking that path. You have to walk that narrow path in the back, and there's a very small land bridge going across to the stuff that you see on your left. So even though it looks like a very narrow area, very narrow area, there's a lot of areas where we can cover to look for fossils. You see in the background faintly, those are some of the big dredging equipment they use. If you ever see that on Discovery Channel, the big earth moving equipment, that's where they use that stuff. They warn you, do not go near the water. You have to stay within, I think, about 20 feet away from the edge of the water. They don't want anybody falling in or causing any problems there. Um, also, you want to make sure you don't fall into any crevasses. Um, if you look at the area, that's rather steep. That's one of the typical smaller hills. There's some that are bigger than that. So you're climbing up and down a lot of areas that are unstable. It's a lot of work. I think the week before we were there, one woman broke her ankle and they had to carry her out. That was a real fun afternoon for them. Now, hey, now there's a nice piece of coral here. But they warn you about a couple of dangers in the area. Anybody spot anything unusual in that picture? You see a spider underneath. Oh my God. Those spiders. Oh my God. They have those throughout the area. By the way, excuse me, Fossil Boy Productions, Ron Fine, and I both took pictures here. Most of these are Ron's, and I thank Ron very much. I wiped out the whole presence. This is Laura. Her first time in the mine, station earlier today trying to um, copy it over. So I had to rebuild this and took all the credits off. Ron actually braved. You didn't, did you use a macro lens on this? You got very close to it to take this picture. So Ron got a nice picture of the Black Widow. So you see, that's something to watch out for. But what everybody's looking for is this. And it doesn't look like much of a photograph. That's typical of the terrain you're looking for. Look a little closer, and you start seeing teeth sitting in. 
Another thing, because of the erosion, you'll see how they sit up on little pedestals. Oh my gosh. I found a meg tooth a few years ago just sitting on a little pedestal like that, just waiting for me to pick it off. Um, one of the persons found a four inch meg tooth, and all he saw was an eighth of an inch of the enamel sticking out from the sand. And he took a series of photographs where he brushed it away until he could uncover it. You'll see him sitting out in the middle, you'll see him partially buried. It takes a keen eye to start to look for things. Remember George? That's what George found in 10 minutes. Wow. So we said, he knows what he's doing. Oh he's a great gosh. guy to help people out. That's why we couldn't find anything. After I saw what he had, I started following George for a while. My luck went really well. <laughs> now, one of our members found, and by the way, they were just inside cases sitting out there. Um, one of our members found a the make to on the left. Uh, that was being given to his son. I love my son very much, but. Um, <laughs> and, well, what kind of tooth is that on the right? Does anybody remember? I don't know if this is a, a dolphin tooth. I don't, it's not a dolphin tooth. I'm not sure what type of tooth that is. Dolphin? Don't know. We'll have to look that up on, on the, um, online. But again, you can see, and that's everybody found, I think, at least a one inch or larger made tooth. Every single one of the people who went on the trip. So we, we, were, we were very, very happy with what we found. Um, for you single guys, this is Laura. Her first time in the mine. Laura's single. She's in her mid-20s. She's very nice. She's attractive. She has her own tools. She loves the outdoors. And she knows how to find Meg T. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any doubt, there's the kicker. A lot of people from all over the country. I think we made the furthest trip, and she was up from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we had some other people from New Jersey as well, and a few from Florida. Um, I didn't find this. No one in our group found this. That's a watch on the bottom. That is a six and a half inch megalodon tube. Wow. It's not a very good picture, but I can verify its authenticity because I took that. Leaning over his shoulder of a crowd of people as they're all going and eyeing over there. <laughs> the guy found it on his way out of the mine. Oh. Wow. The record up until that point was five and a half inches of that day. So you can find, even on the way out, you're still looking. Um, needless to say, we're all happy with plans with our fine <laughs> <laughs> we packed up our luggage. Ron was the only one who actually brought his own carry-on luggage for this. Um, but you'll see why. Oh, one other thing. This um, fossil museum. If you have, it's well worth the trip to the museum. When you see the recreated jaws with all these different teeth from a particular type of shark, you really get an idea of just what it looked like with a mouthful of serrated teeth or a mouthful of pointed teeth. It's fascinating. It's a very, very nice place to go to. And you saw the luggage case a minute ago. That's what Ron found. This is part of what he had in the suitcase. Um, and my wife would just says, why is he ruining a perfectly good coffee table? She doesn't understand. Um, <laughs> close up of some of the bracket pots and the clams that he found. You notice, I think, all those are complete, aren't they, Ron? Yes. He was very, very busy that day. He had 50 half shells on top of that. Wow. Ooh. Very, very nice. Some very nice coral. Uh, he was a little bit busy with gastropods as well, too. You see, look, look at over there on the right side of some of the smaller ones that he found, too. And, of course, the shark teeth. I think it's safe to say, all in all, we had a really good time for this. Again, when we sign up for these trips sometimes, and we had people canceling at the last minute, we still had one open slot for this trip. So anytime we put the word out, and you think you can go, sign up. If you cancel, let us know. But we always were getting people to say, hey, somebody canceled the last minute. Can you come in? OK. So everybody who wanted to go was able to go. So we're very happy about that. That brings us to the end. I thank you all very much.